In the workshop, a marquee traction engine. Part 5, time for a steam test to make sure that the gas burner works. And the first thing that you need for a successful steam test is some water in the boiler. So here in this clip I'm doing just that. Before anyone asks, this is just ordinary tap water. Luckily I live in what's called a soft water area and we do not get problems here with limescale. But if you live in a hard water area, and you can tell this by looking in your kettle if it's full of white stuff, you're in a hard water area. And you're probably better using distilled water or deionized water. In this part of the clip, I'm just filling the displacement lubricator, and it's time to light the burner. In case you wonder why I've been clicking the igniter two or three times, it's just to make sure that the burner is lit. While the boiler is warming up, it's a good idea to lubricate the engine thoroughly. Don't leave out this step, it's very important. If you don't lubricate the engine, it will wear out very quickly. For general purpose lubrication, I'm using this oil mixture, which is 50% steam oil, 25% 3 in 1 machine oil, and 25% rapeseed oil that you get from the supermarket. The last couple of clips haven't been really edited, they're running in real time, and the boiler's warming up nicely. I'm a little concerned because I cannot see the water level in the water gauge, and this is mainly due to the fact that the water gauge is really furred up with limescale. I'm going to attempt to clean it. I'm using a splinter of wood from my box of assorted splinters of wood to poke down into the gauge glass in an attempt to remove the limescale. I forgot to mention that while I was doing this I did turn the heat off to the boiler, so here I'm relighting the gas burner. Currently there isn't any pressure showing on the pressure gauge, but I thought this was a good time to turn over the engine to clear the condensate and as you can clearly see the water's coming out of the top of the chimney. The reason that there's so much water coming out of the top of the chimney is because the boiler is too full. To be on the safe side I put plenty of water in the boiler because I couldn't see the water level in the gauge glass. But in no time at all the excess water is removed by blowing it up the chimney and the engine starts to run on steam. The popping and crackling that you can hear is the oil that's present in the smoke box being burnt by the heat from the gas burner. The boiler's still a bit on the overfull side, that's why the engine's running with a bit of a gurgling noise. But after a while, as the water level inside the boiler starts to drop, the engine runs a lot better, and there's not much in the way of steam pressure currently showing on the pressure gauge. I thought I would engage the gears just so that there's more movement in the video but there's no danger of the traction engine running down the bench because the main wheel is at the back of the bench, not fitted to the engine yet. The pressure is starting to rise, and as you can see there's quite a good plume of steam coming out of the chimney now. With any steam engine boiler, it's a really good idea to check that the safety valve works before the steam pressure rises. And in the previous clip, you can clearly see that as I pull up the centre shaft from the safety valve, it starts to blow off. Having said that, the spring felt very strong for such a small engine. I'll just wait and see how much pressure this engine generates before the safety valve blows off properly. Well, it's running very well. It's really silky smooth. Steam engines always do run better on steam than they do on air. And even though this is classed as a toy steam engine in my book, there's something good about it. It's quite a nice little thing to have on the bench. But enough of that, let's have a look at the pressure in the boiler. Um, this is a little bit on the high side. Going up to 100 pounds per square inch is not what I want to see on an engine of this size. If this was a coal-fired boiler, I would be generally running in the opposite direction by now, but because it's gas-fired, I can just turn the gas off. And once again, when I lift the top of the safety valve, it blows off okay. But the spring is massively strong. I don't know what's going on here. It's not adjustable from underneath like on a Mammod steam engine. This is a proper safety valve, and the spring is far too strong for it. I'm definitely going to do something about this in the next episode. My job with this engine was just to fit a gas burner. I've done that and that works okay, but I've also repainted the gear cover and now I'm going to alter the safety valve and I think I'll take the gauge glass out and replace it. So a small job develops into a slightly larger one, but I don't really mind because I enjoy playing with these things. I always try to repair these steam models that belong to customers as though they were my own. So I'm going to go the extra mile and make this into a really nice running engine. 
I've already had to adjust the valve timing and as you can see it's running really well. In fact I'm going to stop talking now and leave it to the end of the video just running. In slow motion too. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.